Folks, welcome to week seven of our Pick'em show here. And boy, are we excited about this one. This one has been on the calendar for a while. It is actually on Hillary's calendar as the no-fly zone this week. So we put it on the calendar quite a while ago. No-fly zone. Nothing is happening this weekend on Saturday except for football. So Eli, you are still in the lead, my friend. We both had a rough weekend. We went two and three each. It's our first losing weekend that we've had this year. Jeez. Yeah, so it's our first one. So we didn't get that until week six. So kudos to both of us. Let me tell you where you stand right now, folks. It is uh, Eli's 18 and 12 overall against the betting spread. I am 19 and 11. But we have a new thing this year. If you haven't joined us yet, we have a blind draw every week too. So we pick five games against the betting spread, and then we go five blind draws. Eli has crushed it the last couple weeks and has taken the overall lead with 60 points. All right, he is up 60 to 57. I closed the gap just a little bit. All right, he's doing some last minute research here. He's already written down his first pick, so we're gonna dive right into it. We have the Red River Shootout, Red River Rivalry game, however you want to call it. The field is going to be split down the middle at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Texas and Oklahoma. Burnt orange, you got your crimson, you got your, uh, your cream as well. Oklahoma's ranked 18th coming into the game, probably going to start a true freshman quarterback. And uh, Texas has got Quinn Ewers coming back off of a bye week. Both these teams are coming off of a bye week. Texas is a 14-point favorite. Eli, who are you going with here? Uh, I got Oklahoma to cover the spread. I think Texas will win the game. I think Texas is uh, – yeah, I don't think they're the best team in the country. I don't think they're number one. But I think they are a very good team. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, but I the reason why I say Oklahoma yep. is going to cover is because the Red River rivalry is always close. Always. No matter what, if it the score's 28 nothing at halftime, if it's 3-3 three to three at halftime, it's going to be close. If the if it's 0-5 Oklahoma versus 5-0 and Texas, yep. it's going to be close. Yeah. So I think that they will cover the 14 points red. Okay. So. All right. Well, it is uh, – I think it said – Earlier this week, eight out of the last nine games yeah. have been within a score. All right? The only one that was outside of that was 49 to nothing. Okay? Jeez. All right? Now, I know Texas has played Oklahoma or Texas has played Michigan. We have found out over the last few weeks, Michigan, not that good of a program. All right? They went out and lost to Washington this past week with all the other upsets. Oklahoma has played Tennessee, who also lost. All right? Oklahoma also played Auburn. I believe, Eli, and I know this game is always close, I believe Texas wins with a late score to go up 17 points. I think it's going to be a 10-point game. Oklahoma's going to have a turnover. Expect some chaos. I think it's going to be a backdoor cover. Hook them horns. Give me Texas. Okay. All right. So if you could write that down so we can move forward. By that. No, you're good. You're good. All right. Number four, Penn State travels across the country to USC. Penn State is a five and a half point favorite. And Eli has already written his pick down, but give me your thoughts, Eli. I got I got uh I got USC. Uh let me pull up the room. Okay. It keeps opening Um I got I got USC. To be honest, I, I do not think Penn State is the fourth best team in the whole country. Um, if you've seen their games, like it, I, I don't I don't see it to be honest. Yeah. Like they're just not a good in my opinion. Okay, but you uh, think USC is pretty decent? I think USC is decent. Okay. Miller Moss is really good. Zachariah Branch is really good. Yeah. Uh, I know USC just lost to Minnesota, but it like Big Ten is a tough place to go play on the road. It is. And. Oh, a very bad Wisconsin team had had. I know they ended up losing by 21 points, 
but they had USC on the ropes. What was the final score of that game? 38, 17 points. Okay. They had them on the ropes early in the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be a huge game for USC because if they lose this game, they will fall to 1-3 and three in the conference. So yep. I got USC to at least cover. All at right. Least cover. Big 10 teams that have traveled east so far this year. Just the Big Ten, not the other conferences, That's not the right. ACC. How would this relate? All right, I'm about to. Okay. Big Ten teams, so there haven't been that many that have traveled west, except for Michigan, Wisconsin. All right, they're both 0-2, okay? But I think you might be on to something here, Eli, because teams that have traveled east more than two time zones are 1-8 and eight right now. 1-8. and eight. That would have correlated with this game. I know. So, but this is still a two time zone travel. It's just going west. All right. But Wisconsin lost and Michigan lost and Michigan State lost to Oregon 31 to 10. So, I think USC has something here, but that is less than a touchdown. I think Penn State wins. I think Penn State covers. I mean, we we Penn are. Penn State tr- struggled with the UCLA team. So they did. For the first half. They did. And, you see, and Penn State has struggled in the first half. I mean, look at the Bowling Green game. Look at a couple of the other games that they've had. Illinois. Like. Yep. Okay. But Penn State is tough and physical, and I don't think USC is going to be. And this game is an early kick out west. It's 3.30. Yeah, so it'll be noon out there. I don't think the crowd's going to be into it. That aura of the L.A. Coliseum is not quite there. So give me Penn State to cover that six point – or that – Six points, basically five and a half. Okay. All right. We're moving to the biggest game of the weekend. Maybe it will trump the Georgia Alabama game from a few weeks ago. Maybe the back and forth of it will do that. Ohio State. I personally don't. Travels to Oregon across the country. Ohio State's number two in the in the country. Oregon's number three. Is Oregon the number three best team in the country? No. We don't know. Is Ohio State the second best team in the country? Especially after weekend last weekend? Yes. We don't know. All right, give me your thoughts. I know you wrote down your pick already, but give me your thoughts. I think Ohio State's going to destroy Oregon. Like, it might not be that of the scoreboard, but like, Throughout the game, they're going to destroy them. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you just look at the past games, uh, Jeremiah Smith is playing like a, uh, like a Heisman favorite right now. Yeah. Uh, I know he's not in the Heisman running, but uh, John Kibbs is playing good. Travion Henderson playing good. Uh, they just they beat a pretty good Iowa team. They beat the Spartans on the road, which is not a, like it's not an easy place to go into. Yeah. They beat Marshall pretty handily. They beat Western Michigan and Akron pretty handily. Oregon beat Michigan State at home, which is a good win. Uh, but then they barely beat Boise State, and they beat Idaho by 10. Yep. So, but look at what they've done since then, though. Pretty, I mean, pretty Oregon, decent. Oregon State's not that good. So they UCLA's, have UCLA's. They don't have a common UCLA's, opponent yet, right? UCLA is 1-4. Oh, yeah, they do have Michigan State. Michigan State. All right. But, like, I just I don't, I don't see it, to be honest. I mean, okay. it might be a thing where... Oregon's able to turn it on whenever they have to play somebody good, and I might eat my crow next week. But yeah. I, I'm going to go Ohio State. Ohio State is, from what I've seen, they look like the best team in the country. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Oregon here. I think Oregon is a uh, – I think Oregon is a, a really good team. I think Ohio State is a really good team. I think it's going to be an unbelievable game. But I am going to go with Oregon to cover here. I think Ohio State may win on a last-second field goal. I did pick Ohio State to win the national championship in my preseason prediction, so I'm still holding true there. But I think Oregon covers the three-and-a-half points. You, you, it's not like a you have to go undefeated to win the national championship. Correct. You could have two. I matches. think they could lose this game and still meet again in the Big Ten championship game and, and potentially the playoff. Yeah. I mean, there's a, like, there's possibilities for anything, y'all. Yep. This year. All right. So, at the same time that that game is going on, there's another game going on in an unbelievable environment it's down really- on the bayou. Ole Miss at LSU. Number nine, Ole Miss is a two and a half point favorite versus number 13, LSU. Yeah. Well, 
the last time that Ole Miss went into Tiger Stadium and was supposed to dominate, they got upset and destroyed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but last year we were was it that lost by six, had a chance to win it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fifty. Fifty five, forty nine. The game still we need to get revenge, and I think LSU will. The only, and it, it, you know what's going to be really funny and like hypocritical about this is I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say how like I'm worried about our offense, like just the slightest bit. Yeah. But we scored forty two points, thirty four points, thirty six points, and forty four points. Mm-hmm. Now it wasn't against Nichols in South Alabama two of those games, but still. Yeah. The part I'm worried about a little bit more though is our defense, obviously, because yep. we're facing a real, real opponent. And uh, if we can contain Jackson Dart, I think that's going to be the best way to do that. If we just play like how Kentucky played, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So I got LSU. Okay. LSU to cover. Um, I think Ole Miss wins this game. Brian Kelly gets so nervous and so uptight and doesn't perform in big games. Now, he is the underdog. And that's a different story. When he's the favorite in big games, he doesn't show up. But his teams at LSU are not very good. Give me Ole Miss. I hate to say it. I want LSU to win. I'm going to be pulling for them to win. But I do think Ole Miss wins the game. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be close. It's going to come down to a late offensive possession. And who executes, whether it's the LSU defense or the Ole Miss offense, I think it's going to uh, sway the game one way or the other, but look for a lot of yards and look for a lot of playmakers all over the field. Watch out, number one wide receiver for Ole Miss, Trey Harris, got banged up in that South Carolina game. Mm-hmm. Hasn't hasn't been ruled in or out yet, so uh, look for that to potentially sway some of the line if, if he can't go. Um, but I will tell you this, to watch out for as well, Ole Miss has only scored 17 points and 27 points the last two weeks. Now, they lost to Kentucky. They gave up 20. They beat South Carolina on the road. Um, and South Carolina's defense somewhat, okay, Gamecock fans, reminds me of LSU's defense. Good up front and then not as good in the defensive backfield. And so I see a lot of similarities. South Carolina had some success there in certain parts. I know they gave up 27 points and lost by 24. But – I think LSU's offense is a lot better than South Carolina's. So I think it's going to be a really close game. I'm excited to see it. It's going to be an insane environment in Tiger Stadium. It's Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. One, it never rains, and LSU hardly ever loses. So I hope LSU wins, but I'm going to go with uh, the stats from Brian Kelly in big games, and it's not very good right now. So give me Ole Miss to cover that two and a half points. All right, last game on the picks. We got Kansas State at Colorado. Eli has already written his picks down. He has got Kansas State. All right. Why do you have Kansas State winning this game? Because I've picked against Kansas State for the last three times that they've been on our picks. (laughs) And I've lost that game every time. And plus, this is Colorado's, depending on how you look at it, first real test. Yeah. Could be a second test. Nebraska was a really tough game on the road. Yep. It was a ranked team at that time. Yeah. Um, I mean, UCF was a test too. But anyway, um, this is going to be their first real test. And I think this is going to show the true Colorado. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, besides the BYU game, and BYU is 5-0 and and ranked, mm-hmm. I think Kansas State has looked amazing. They destroyed... Uh, Arizona, which I did not think was happening. Also, by the way, just side note, where is Arizona? I don't know where, like, where did they go? They, they've been injuries, man. Crap. Yeah, injuries. Uh, where are they? Three and two now? Yeah, they're three yeah. and two. Injuries. One of one overall, or in conference. And then Oklahoma State, they beat Oklahoma State 42 to 20. So, yeah, I, I, I keep talking bad about Avery Johnson, but I mean, I got it. It, it gets to a point where I can't say, like, I can't. Keep saying it just because I don't like him, and they keep winning. So I gotta, I gotta ride with them, I guess. Give me prime time, man. Give me, give me Dion yeah. under the lights, yeah, and give me an outright win. That's crazy. Give me an outright win. I know that defense has a lot of holes. Avery Johnson will probably light them up, but I like Shadur Sanders and what he's doing right now. I think they found some stuff at UCF. And who did who did Kansas State lose to? BYU. 
Lost to BYU. BYU's a pretty good team. How many points they scored? Third night. Nine? Yeah. And it was at night? Was late at, at night. Late at night at BYU. At BYU. Which Utah is, is right hey, beside Colorado. Yeah, you know. Going up to Boulder. What? Yeah, give me the buffs. Utah, Utah and Colorado, Colorado are side, yeah. right beside each other. Awesome. And for all you baseball fans, the hey. Mets are one out away from knocking the Phillies out of the hey, playoffs. Pro- Provo is not an easy place to go play in that. All right, you want to go first or you want me to go first? For blind draw. You go first. Me? All right, here we go, folks. Blind draw. We got all five games different, by the way, too. So that could be really good for one of us, or that could be really, really bad. The Colorado running back has less than 25 carries and not even 125 yards rushing. Wow. That is sad. Not a, not a touchdown, either. Not a single touchdown. Ryan Williams had more yards than that in the one game against Jordan. Wow. I know it was receiving, but still. Ask GT had more in the yards last game. All right. And that's not even as much. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Give me one second. Why don't you talk to the folks about our blind draw picks All right. and how well you've been doing. But um, well, give I've me been, one second. I've been doing I mean, really well, which is very surprising because normally whenever you wait like to the literal last Ball game. Minute, Mets win. Normally, whenever you wait to the last minute to do something, the gods above kind of really don't help you out. I don't know how it's happening right now, but yeah, I, I'm 